days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers cut back podcast time. Um, news abounds in 49ers land, and we got a lot to talk about. Um, some interesting topics, you know, about players coming back, players still a little nicked up, and then two guys that are out there um, that we need to at least have a conversation about because everyone is talking about it, yep. and I would like to put my two cents in. I uh, would definitely want to put my two cents in on this. Uh, there's a lot going on with the, the D Jackson OBJ stuff. Uh, but make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Become the newest member of the Cutback Crew as we make that push for 3K. Uh, man, we, we got to 2K really quick, and I, I feel like I blinked, uh, turned around two or three times, and then bang, we were there, and it's like awesome. That's incredible. So help us keep growing. Help this channel keep getting this content out to the faithful right here, to the faithful, to the Niners Empire, as our boy Jay in the Bay would say. And that's that episode, What's Good with Jay in the Bay, is coming up after this 2 p.m pacific time don't miss that it's a lot of fun uh but look we gotta we gotta talk about the news we gotta talk about what's going on with this team what's happening um you know we had a lot of things that we discussed yesterday in the preview show with the game 49ers cardinals you know th matchups things the 49ers need to do to take care of business against this arizona cardinals team and now we're getting some some updates on players and and, and what's going on with these guys and uh, just kind of where everyone's at so so good news for the faithful, for the 49ers, for the cutback crew, Trent Williams back practicing in full, as is Elijah Mitchell. <sighs> Feeling better about that, at least. That's two important pieces on the offense through the season so far, Ant. Um, so hopefully, run game at an all-time high. The ability to check for Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo against this, you know, vaunted edge-rushing presence from the Arizona Cardinals now, a little bit more stable. Yeah, it makes me feel a lot better, especially since the stats come out that Trent Williams... Um, runs behind him are going for 5.9 yards per carry um that means that it you know they're very successful there so him being out there is going to be pivotal for this team oh man and now that he's back you know i feel comfortable with him playing on sunday so that's good news elijah mitchell was in the blue no contact jersey so there's still a little bit of worry um but ultimately he's back out there he's going through full practice just without the contact not a lot of contact anyways um, so I'm I'm feeling good about this, about both of them coming back. And that's really what we need. We need both of these guys at full strength to be able to beat Arizona. Arizona is a very formidable team. Um, they can't be taken lightly. But in the same regard, the 49ers are you know, moving in the right direction. And we need wins. And we need wins against division opponents. And this would be a huge win for the 49ers. So they need all hands on deck. They need to be able to execute. And these are two big cogs. Trent Williams, the biggest cog um, of cogs. Because when he's rolling, this team is rolling. And... He did so many great things in this game. I can't wait for everyone to, you know, just see what he does again against Arizona because I think last week, he, or last time he, they played, he was hindered a little bit um, with the elbow, with the ankle. I think he's more healthy and ready to go, and he's ready to prove that Chandler Jones has no chance against him. So I'm, I'm excited about this matchup. I'm excited about that matchup in particular. So it's going to be a fun one, and uh, thank God Trent Williams is good to go. It's huge, man. I mean, Trent Williams, it cannot be understated how important he is. Um, you know, I know 49ers fans have a love-hate relationship when it comes to players who we've paid a lot of money to and their availability on Sundays. I get it. I, I truly do. But, and this is a big but, um, 49ers fans, you need to keep in mind a few things. Number one, most importantly, when Trent goes out, it's for a short amount of time, unless he's playing for the Washington football team and they're misdiagnosing uh, you know, head issues for... Uh, actual cancerous brain stuff and you know we, we haven't made that kind of baffling mistake and caused Trent Williams to miss a significant amount of games so I feel pretty good about the medical staff and what this team is doing in terms of keeping their players healthy uh, that's number one uh, number two and, and most most importantly every team deals with injuries right and so the fact that Trent is dealing with little small nicks right now that's you know keeping him from some practices has made him miss one game uh, I, I don't necessarily hate it especially since right the game that Trent missed Jalen Moore wasn't the reason for a loss. No. Jalen Moore played fine. Jalen Moore played excellent for a fifth round rookie coming in and having to lock down on the, the left side of the line as a left tackle. Jalen Moore excelled in that moment and in that opportunity. So no, you know, Trent missing a game here and there, as long as it's not, you know, he misses a game and we don't have someone there to secure. We, we have someone out there in Jalen Moore that in the right situation against the right a team and opponent, we're going to be just fine again. 
against. This is not one of those games, though. This is one of those games where you ask Jalen Moore to go out there, question mark. So the fact that Trent's already back at practice makes you feel a little bit more comfortable inside and hopefully should quell some of the frustrations with the, oh, Trent's always hurt stuff. I mean, listen, he gets banged up, but every guy in the league gets banged up and he's working through it and he's playing through it. And the Cardinals are no different. They got guys in the O-line who are banged up, whether that's Hudson, whether that's Max Garcia, the backup center, whether that's Justin Pugh. They got a lot of nicks and dings and bruises going on over there as well. So no one is ever healthy throughout an, an entire NFL season. Trent, though, is going to be healthier. He's getting close to being healthier. Elijah Mitchell being back out there. And Ant, Debo Samuel, on the bicycle. Um, uh, El Bicicleta, La Bicicleta. Um, our, our Spanish-speaking audience, you can help me with that one there. Uh, but the bicycle, he's out there riding the bike at practice. Don't No real updates in terms of if he did anything extraneous after that at this point in time. But... Kyle did say he would be absolutely surprised if Debo wasn't ready to go on Sunday. Uh, so he's definitely going to have the questionable tag, but it's definitely questionable expected to play Sunday. Yeah, and that's what I'm waiting to hear from today. Is he going to be on the questionable list or is he going to be doubtful? A questionable um, determination probably means he's going to play. And if he's doubtful, he probably won't. I would hope that he's going to be out for Friday's, you know, walk through Friday's practice and they're going to get you know, a look at him and he's going to be able to go a little bit. So I'm still a little bit nervous. I'm, I'm hanging, I'm, I'm hanging on to the positivity, but in the same regard, I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, Debo's got the calf. He's not practicing yet. Um, at this time last, you know, last week he had already done a limited practice. So it is a little bit of a hesitation, but maybe they feel that they need to wait it out a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, I want to see Debo Samuel on the field. I think everyone does. We need him. Um, and hopefully that this is, this is no big deal. He's on the bike. He's getting some, some work in. Let's hope that he can do something Friday or at least be ready to go on Sunday. Uh, we, we need him against Arizona. We need all hands on deck because it's not going to be an easy feat to beat this team. Correct. And, and there were some reports coming out of Cardinals practice from Thursday. Some of those reports are still no D-hop, still no Kyler Murray. Um, a lot of people, uh, ESPN came out with a big article, right? Big article Wednesday, Thursday about how Kyler, they expect him to play. I'm hearing rumblings from a lot of different people, whether that's Cardinals fans or whether that's a few other people that cover the Cardinals or just covering this 49ers Cardinals matchup that are looking like D hop is the one that is actually trending towards being available. And Kyler isn't the one trending towards being available. So we'll see what happens Friday today going to be the biggest, biggest day in terms of designation of where guys are at. No practice still for Kyler, no practice for D hop doubtful definitely going to be doubtful for this game and that has a huge impact on you know what the 49ers can do so make sure you're subscribed and you're here for saturday's game plan video because once we have a better idea of who's where who's yeah. starting who's on the field who's not uh we gotta have a really really good insight into what's going on and, and what the game plan is going to be for the 49ers on offense and on defense yeah and you can adjust things up you know once you find out what's going on on friday and saturday you can adjust things up as, as a team uh, but you definitely prepare for the most difficult task, which is Kyler Murray. You prepare for him and the things that he can do outside the pocket. We can extend plays and with a flick of the wrist, get the ball 30, 40 yards downfield. Frustrating. It, it's impressive. I mean, he's got a lot of skills and you know what you need to do against him, right? You need to keep him in the pocket. Um, Fred Warner talked about, you know, him bailing in the, in the pocket and getting deeper and deeper and deeper. That way he can see. And they were able to kind of, you know, keep him inside the pocket at times and then get him for big sacks. And we we saw that once they got him for a big sack, they made him check down underneath and got sure. off the field. What you're one sack on first down away from getting off the field, but that would be huge if it's Colt McCoy because if it's Colt McCoy, it changes everything. You're able to be more aggressive as a defense. You're able to attack. You're able to go cover one on third down and get after it. Um, so it's a different animal completely between Colt McCoy and Kyler Murray. And yeah, I'm excited for Saturday's game plan episode because we're gonna get to break it down. Because hopefully. Today, we're going to get a really good idea of, of where Kyler Murray is sitting, where DeAndre Hopkins is sitting, and how this team is ultimately going to be constituted, because there's still the outside chance A.J. Green isn't going to play as well. Um, do they have enough talent on the outside? Yes, of course. And enough speed. Oh, yeah. Rondell Moore, and, you know, Andy Isabella, Christian Kirk, all those guys can get it done. You still have Zach Ertz playing the, the tight end position. Um, there's no shortage of talent on Arizona, but in the same regard, the 49ers played a very healthy Arizona team and held them to 17 points before with D'Amico Ryan's game plan. So I think they understand how to attack Cliff Kingsbury. And I think we have a good understanding of how they're going to attack Cliff Kingsbury. So Saturday's episode is going to be fun to get into. It's going to be a lot of fun to get into, man. I'm, I'm really excited for that and, and just what that means. Um, but, and this is this is a big but for the Ooh, 49ers, right? Big but. With, with the question mark surrounding Debo Samuel. Okay, sir, mix a lot. I like, uh, I don't like big butts. <laughs> 
um, in regards to the 49ers and Debo Samuel's <laughs> availability. Uh, but uh, this is a, it's an interesting situation because with Debo on the question mark list, with George Kittle making his first first start, his first return, right, since he went on IR a few, a few weeks back, there's got to be other guys elevating and stepping up. And Brandon Ayuk had a big week, right? We talked yesterday, or excuse me, a few days ago, about the GPS conundrum and what's going on with uh, Brandon Ayuk and, and what was leading into the situation as well. And, and, and now that it's out there, right, and now that everyone knows kind of what's going on and everyone's kind of putting the pieces together, the pieces that we had kind of already put together, you have people making comments. You have people talking about this, um, you know, talking about what's going on and, and what's been happening. And Jimmy had some very interesting comments as well, um, but not in like a negative light. No, the, the opposite. He talks about how Brandon let off the gas, and he, he let off the gas a little bit, but is now on an upward trajectory. You last week said it felt like every, the pieces were aligning and things were falling into place for Brandon Ayuk to have his best game of the season. Well, you were right. It wasn't bold. It wasn't anything. It was just accurate, Ant. You were just accurate it on it. It was a spoiler. It was a spoiler. It was. That's what you called it. You called yeah. it a spoiler. This week, you give a while that's bold. Two Brandon Ayuk touchdowns. And now Jimmy comes out the day after the preview show, or actually, excuse me, as the preview show is going live technically yesterday, and says Brandon Ayuk is on an upward trajectory. He talked about how he wouldn't have called what Brandon Ayuk was in the doghouse. He was just finding his way. I guess you could say his role wasn't completely defined yet. It's kind of a lengthy process. But we got into a good point, a really good point for BA. It's all about keeping that thing going right now because he's on an upward trajectory. He's just got to stay with it right now. Uh, Lynch and kind of Shanahan had talked about uh, talked about how you know he, he was starting to show those strides and make those improvements and was coming out of the struggle jimmy finished off that quote with when you're young like that and you see some success early it's easy to let off the gas with ba he's in a really good spot his foot's on the gas pedal he's been working putting in the extra time it's paying off and i'm happy for him Ant is brandon Ayuk about to just to the moon kind of like how devo samuel started off the year second half is going to be the brandon Ayuk show well, I think him saying he's not in the doghouse means I was right. He was on the doghouse. He was killing around it. Um, and, you know, this is pretty consistent with what Mike McDaniel said earlier, right? Remember that maybe B.A. had pulled his foot off the gas pedal a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now you hear Jimmy Garoppolo e echoing the same sentiments. I think that, you know, he's sitting at the table again. I, I think he's right there. That's good. Um, Kyle Shanahan's you know, got him in a, in a good position. They feel like he's made the strides that he needed to make. He stepped up his game in practice. A message received as it would be. And now he's going to go out there and he's going to execute. And now we can see the brand Ayuk that everyone was expecting week one. We can see it now. But it took a long time of development. He had to learn. And it was a mental thing. It wasn't a physical thing. It was a mental thing of him learning that you have to completely have your foot on the gas at all times in the NFL. Or somebody's coming for your spot. You know, this isn't, this isn't high school. This isn't youth football where you're the best guy out there and no one can take your spot. Even if you miss days because you're just the best guy. That doesn't exist in the NFL because everyone's the best guy. All these guys have extreme amounts of talent, and there's always somebody there that's willing to outwork you. And that's the problem. Trent Sherfield was there, and he was outworking Brandon Ayuk all through training camp, and he was making things happen. Brandon Ayuk is the absolute elite talent in this league. But when you don't put in the effort, that elite talent is not going to shine through. And now you're seeing the sentiments of all these players and everyone backing him up now. Like, all right, here he goes. He's on the upward trajectory. We appreciate the effort that you've put out. And the film has showed that as well. You see on blocking a place where he's blocking, he's going and getting the safety. He's driving the guy down the field and then acting super excited, running up, you know, the sideline. That's a that's a different element from Brandon Ayuk. That's an excitement, him taking pride in what he's doing. He's learned the lesson. So I think we can as long as this thing keeps going the way it's going, the upward trajectory, we can say that the way that Kyle Shanahan handled this situation, whether you agreed with it or not at the time. It appears to be the right thing because Brian Ayuk may be coming into his own. And you're right. If he can have anything sort of what Debo Samuel has done for the first half of the season and the second half of the season, look out because this 49 yards offense is going to be very, very impossible to stop. Oh, it's going to be extremely impossible to stop, man. If Brian Ayuk can take that step. And Mike McDaniel was kind of built upon what Jimmy Garoppolo had to say as well and talked about how Ayuk's finally understanding what it means to be a pro. Right, he said he's looking. Look, Brandon is looking like the guy they envisioned he would be when they drafted him last year. Uh -oh. That's scary, bro. If you're the rest of the teams, uh -oh. like, that's terrifying, man. That's absolutely terrifying. And Ant, you were one week ahead of everyone else when you said spoiler alert. Brandon Ayuk's gonna have his best game of the season. Yeah. Jimmy Garoppolo, he had his best game as a blocker, as a receiver, and as a returner. Uh oh, indeed, man. Yeah. This is scary. This is scary news for the rest of the NFL. And if you're a 49ers fan right now, you should be extremely, extremely excited because the thing that we talked about, right? 
The thing with this team, if the defense is struggling, the defense is having some problems, the defense isn't healthy, if you got all of these weapons and all of these pieces and everyone's healthy, this is a team that can easily put up 30 plus points a game, which puts you in every single game in the NFL. Every single game in the NFL you can be a part of. And with Brandon Ayuk starting to elevate, Brandon Ayuk getting there, and Jimmy Garoppolo feeling comfortable with him, McDaniel's feeling comfortable, Kyle being like, not only welcome back into the house, but here's your seat at the table, here is your plate, feast, young man, feast. The Niners could be getting to a point now where, yeah, you're missing Kinlaw for the year, that sucks. You're missing Hurst for a little bit of time, that sucks. You went and made the move for Omenahu, that should help a little bit, right? Fred, getting healthy, or Fred's been healthy, excuse me, Aziz, back in the fold, Greenlaw, this much closer, right, to being back on the field. Don't need this defense to necessarily be elite anymore, Ant. You can rely on this offense maybe a little bit more. I think you can rely on the offense a little bit more. I mean, just seeing what Jimmy Garoppolo was doing, the things that he was taking in this game, and the way that Brandon Ayuk was able to win on one-on-ones. He was winning on slants. He was he was making things look normal. Remember how you talked about early in the season where you expected him to run a route a certain way, and then he did it completely opposite, so the look didn't look the same? Well, in this game... There was the second play of the game. He runs a fade. He lines up in the slot and he runs a fade. Um, and Jimmy Garoppolo just misses him. The time is timing's off. He doesn't get him the ball. Later in the game, when he runs a slant, he runs the same look like he's running the fade from the exact same formation, except this time he breaks inside and completely sets the corner up and makes the catch for a big first down. The next play, they go deep to Debo for over 50 yards and they get a you know a good opportunity. It starts because things look the same for Brandon Ayuk. Consistency. Consistency. Um, and that's the thing. When you're doing things full speed, hard every single time, then it looks the same, and it confuses the DB. He twists his hips, thinking you're going to run past him, and then you've got him beat. That is what it's been all about this whole time. Or they start getting flat-footed, right? Because oh, everything yeah. looks the same, and they're like, well, last time he, first time he went deep, right? Second time he goes on a slant. I, I got to stop reacting, right? I got to stop giving this guy stuff. I need to make him make the first move. Well, sometimes that's a problem because if the first move is vertical, and uh, you're not able to keep up with Brandon Ayuk. Okay, see you later. That's a, yeah. that's a toast show. So this is what I mean. Brandon is starting to figure it out. Everything, the pieces are starting to come together, which is which is absolutely phenomenal. That's what we need from Brandon Ayuk. It's what we need for this offense. That extra that extra weapon that can not only take it over the top right, but take you over the middle, take you short, throw it on the screen. And when it's not your turn to have the ball in your hands, you'll run guys off. You'll run those guys off hard. So you clear out that space for Debo. You clear it out for George Kittle. Or you're out in space laying huge blocks, making sure you're holding guys off in space so that we can get the yardage we need. Little screen passes can turn into big plays. And then you can Naruto to run into the end zone, uh, you know, as, as Elijah Mitchell is doing his thing out there in space. So Brandon figuring it out. Brandon turning the corner as a professional ant. Um, and I did see a funny tweet that said, Does, do we even know what that even what that even is supposed to mean? What being a pro means? And it's like, it, yes, doing job at the premier level, the highest level possible no questions no complaints yeah you know i i don't have to worry about you working your hardest being the best version of yourself day in and day out um and as raheem mostert put on his twitter account this morning uh every day you get one percent better when you're a pro that's your job your job is to take take your game and make it you know one percent better just turn it up a little bit um so that way you're getting close to being perfect which would be that hundred percent you're just Add that percentage point. Get yourself a little bit better today than you were yesterday. And as long as you're doing that, you're going to continue to thrive in this league. 100%. I mean, it's about showing up on time. It's about putting forth that effort that you need to put every single time. Being a pro is effort. Um, you have to do the right things every single time it's asked of you. You know, you need to be doing it even when people aren't looking. Um, that is what being a pro is about. And Brian Ayuk is figuring it out. Last year was a, a completely different animal in the way that that offseason worked. Um, from how the, the draft was handled to no mini camps him coming into a shortened training camp and then being injured and starting the season that way. Um, it was kind of just more go out there and, and make things happen, young kid, um, because the offense was in disarray. You had different quarterback and all that. And now they're starting to get it back on timing. He's He had to figure out how to be a pro, and he learned. And and now that he's learned, he's going to elevate his game, and he's going to be ex going to excel. Um, but this is a learning thing that needed to happen, and uh, at least he's responding. You know, There's been other guys that haven't responded to this, but Brandon Ayuk is responding and in a positive way. Let's see how the upper trajectory goes. But, um, yeah, I think he's going to have a big game this week. I agree with you. I, I, I truly do. I truly do. And, and the guy who needs to also have a big game is Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, and, you know, the Brandon Ayuk comments weren't the only comments he had to make. He said some other things as well, specifically talking about how, at the end of the day, Ant, he knows he's a winner. 
He knows that he can win football games for this team. He knows he can win football games in this league and can take this team to the area and the place that we want this team to go, which is the Super Bowl. Um, he, he knows that he can truly believe that, and he truly believes in himself in, in that regard. Um, it's just kind of something that comes with the territory, I guess. You have to embrace it, and he's specifically talking about all the noise surrounding him as the starter. Trey, is he being traded, the trade deadline approaching, all that. He says, when people aren't talking about you that you're in real trouble, um, then you're not too important at that point. So he knows the fact that he's still in the conversation and a part of the conversation. And in, in some cases, the focal point of the conversation means that, you know, he's not someone that people have forgotten about. He's not someone that's not important to this team. He knows he's important to this team. And he knows that there's a number of different words. At the end of the day, as the noise is going on, people are going to say whatever. Uh, I'm a winner and I'm going to go out there and win the game. Whatever it takes, I'm willing to do it. Jimmy Garoppolo, I said this last week after the game. Feels like we're starting to see that, that return of that aura, that that aura of Jimmy Garoppolo in which he is confident in himself, believes that he can, not that he can't do no wrong, but that he's the guy, right, that can get this done for this group, that he can change change the way things have been going, and that he fully believes in himself and his abilities. When Jimmy Garoppolo is playing with that much confidence, and part of it is the back against the wall and that chip on his shoulder, it's really hard. It's really hard to believe that this team can operate better than it, what it is right now. It just needs to keep going. Yeah, that's why my key matchup was Jimmy versus Jimmy G. And this is Jimmy G. This is this is that G. This the is that G Q. thing. Um, this guy steps up, you know, and, and he's he's showing that swag that he had when he first got here. You know, that everyone believed he was a winner. I mean, people wanted to back Jimmy Garoppolo because he was a winner. He was somebody that was gonna win football games. He had learned from Tom Brady. And then in 2019, everyone was ready to roll with him because you know what? He did, he won. Um, he's not lying when he says he's a winner because when he's on the field, you have a better chance of winning than when he's not. Um, they just don't win football games. Kyle Shanahan does not win football games without Jimmy Garoppolo right now. I think that he, you know, they've taken steps to win games with without Jimmy here. But right now, Jimmy Garoppolo is the best option for the 49ers to win football games. He knows it. He's taking on that aggressive style. I like it. Um, he's he's displaying. I, I think he would love for people to like him. But in the same regard, he's just if if you like me, great. If you don't, that's okay too. Um, embrace it and go out there and win football games. But I like the attitude. I like the swagger. I like the team leadership that I've seen from him. And if he steps up against Arizona and he shows out in this game, not only is it going to be big for him confidence-wise, it's going to be big for that locker room. You think Huge. that locker room is behind him right now? You wait until he has a big game. They're going to lock and load behind him. And anyone comes at him, and they're going to have his back in a big way. Um, this could be huge for the 49ers. I mean, it this is. game is super pivotal. Not only is it a big game because it's a divisional you know, matchup and a divisional rival, but it's a huge game because this offense needs to click and fire on all cylinders. And if Jimmy Garoppolo can prove that he can still execute as a healthy quarterback in this league, um, I think it's going to quell some of the concerns in that locker room for sure. And everyone is going to get right behind him. And I'm looking forward to it. Um, the things that Kyle Shanahan you know, said, the game ball that he gave to him. Uh, yeah, this is, this is Jimmy's team as long as Jimmy can play well. And I think he's a couple games away from this just being Jimmy's team for the rest of the season. You're right. I mean, if we, if the Niners are able to win off, win the next two, and you put yourself above 500, you know what you got coming up the week after that. You got yourself an extremely winnable football game coming on a three game winning streak and a chance for the the ball to get rolling right down that hill. And once it gets rolling, that momentum comes to San Francisco's way. It's going to be very very hard for anyone, anyone that they got left on the schedule to stop them. Um, you know, especially if you're able to get a win early in the season now or early in this second half of the season against the Rams because you got them later in the year. And if they continue to roll through everybody too, when you get down to the end of the season, they may be resting. Yeah. The Niners will still be playing for, you know, at that point, which, you know, if they were able to continually consistently win football games, be playing for a better playoff positioning or, you know, just fighting to stay in the playoff picture, but uh, they got plenty of winnable games. And the next two here are extremely important because not only are the division games, but they're two teams at the top of the division that you can kind of knock down off their pedestal a little bit and really elevate yourself and where your headspace is at in terms of how great of a football team are we? Um, because there's, it, it's one thing to start off the year the way they did, win two straight and then drop four in a row. But you, get a final, you finally get a win. If you're able to knock off two teams near the top, and you truly, full, you already fully believed, right, that you were a team that should be in that same category as all these other teams. Well, now the only thing that's preventing you from being there is your early start. So that means you're still playing from behind the eight ball. You're still the wounded animal. You're still the team that everyone doubts because, well, we saw the worst version of yourself. And it's like, yeah, you did. You saw the worst version of what this football team can be. But now let us show you the best version. And mm -hmm. once you get those those couple wins under your belt against those type of opponents, 
you know who you are. You're starting to find that identity and what makes you tick. Really easy to hold on to that the rest of the year because you know where you've been, you know where you are now, and you know where you want to be. Yeah, and there's nine games left. A lot of football. There's a lot of football There's a lot, of, football a lot um, of football. There's a lot of opportunities for the 49ers to get this thing rolling, and all they need is a ticket to the show. You know, all they need is a ticket to the playoffs. Just let us in the front um, door. Yeah, let us in, and then let's see what happens. Sometimes, you, you know, unfortunately, you leave it cracked, and we're going to kick the door open. I like it. Um, That's the attitude that Jimmy Garoppolo is coming with right now. You know, he's coming with, okay, you're going to leave it cracked for me to get in. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna kick it open. And I and I really want to I really want to see what happens if this guy executes at a high level and this team backs him up all the way. I just thought of like, Jimmy Garoppolo kicks the door open, but before Jimmy walks in, George Kittle pokes his head up. Oh hey there! Yeah. <laughs> oh hey there! Oh yeah. We're we're here now. Yeah. We're gonna have some fun. And and that's the thing. If they win these two games, they're gonna kick the door open on everyone's power rankings. Um, welcome the 49ers at five and four to the top ten. That's what would happen. <laughs> that's gonna if they won happen. those two games. So, yeah. um, it's an if. It, it is an if, and they're gonna have to execute. And it's not gonna be easy. It's not easy to beat the Cardinals, and it sure as heck not easy to beat the Rams. No, those are not two easy games, mm-hmm. and they shouldn't be taken lightly. Um, but you know what? It's all about opportunity, and the 49ers have an opportunity, right? Huge opportunity, Ant. Um, but there are also two gentlemen who are looking for better opportunities. <laughs> they are apparently. Um, I, I found this very funny. There was a, a certain gentleman. Who is uh, ban- who was banned off of YouTube, but is finding himself a, a way to get himself a new channel, Mr. Naylor, Jesse Naylor. Yeah. Um, he talked about how OBJ and Deshaun, ja- Deshaun Jackson are wanting out of winning situations because they weren't getting the ball enough. I saw that tweet and was like, wait, was Odell Beckham in a winning situation there in Cleveland this year? Is that what's going on? Are they, are they winning a lot of football um. games? Uh, well, I do know that Baker Mayfield doesn't win when he throws to Odell Beckham. He's thrown for more interceptions when intended for an Odell Beckham than touchdowns. It's true. It's, uh, it's, it's like nine to six, I believe. It's not good. So, look, uh, the Sean Jackson definitely wanted out of a winning situation there in, in Los Angeles. I mean, we can all agree to that. But it's not that Deshaun Jackson, I think, wants out. I think Deshaun Jackson was probably told a certain role or thing that he was going because he signed there. He signed there. There was a conversation. They talked. He obviously talked with McVeigh in terms of what his role was going to be, and it just hasn't worked out. And so I think he's looking for a different role with a team, as is Odell Beckham. I mean, uh, listen, he's not been officially cut. Nothing has officially happened there, but he has no plans to return to that organization to the team. He has no tra- tra- chance to. He has no desire to return to practice. His dad is tweeting stuff about how, you know, he ain't going to play there. They just don't want to throw him the ball when he's open. I really want to watch some Cleveland Brown All-22 film now to see what's going on there, what's actually happening. Um, and if it's overblown, if OBJ is rightfully upset, or if, uh, you know, he's just being a prima donna and doing, you know, diva things. I, I don't know. I don't want to put anything on Odell either way, one way or the other. Um, you know, he does have a, a negative history, though, so there's obviously going to be a negative spin on it in his direction no matter what happens. Uh, but Ant... Are either of these two guys options for the 49ers? Because 49ers fans are now talking about it. You got Naylor referring to it and quite, you know talking about it. And Thanos is doing his thing. And, yeah, and Mayoko covered it too. So Matt Mioko talked about it. So yeah. I mean, this is the conversation that's happening. Does this make sense? You and I weren't even willing to to want to trade for Odell Beckham. If I still wouldn't trade for Odell Beckham. Oh, 100% wouldn't. But if he's available as a free agent, as a guy you could bring into your organization, onto your team that way, does it make more sense that way? And does Sean Jackson make sense? I think as far as X's and O's, both of them make sense. Yeah. Um, because Deshaun Jackson, number one, he takes the top off the defense. Yep. And remember, the, the Sean McVay play that me and you hate the most is the one where he runs down the sideline. It's Deshaun it's Jackson. It's Deshaun Jackson. Yeah. Because Deshaun Jackson you know, completely blew up the defense, took the top off. Could you imagine? You saw what they did. They tried to do with Travis Benjamin. If that's Deshaun Jackson, every single safety in the league is not coming up on the dig route. They are staying deep to try to stop Deshaun Jackson. That's just 100%. And Odell Beckham is that kind of speed as well. Those guys are dynamic athletes that can stretch the field. The question is, are they going to want to come here? Now, we do know that we have the history of Odell Beckham, where he famously told Jimmy Garoppolo, hey, if I can get out, I'm going to come. You know, he wanted to come to San Francisco. That was in 2019. He wanted to be with the 49ers. I mean, of course, at that time, the 49ers were the hot team. Kyle Shanahan has been rumored to want Odell Beckham Jr. in his offense for a long time. So he makes sense. Um, right away, you put him with Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel as those are the top three receivers, and it's one of the most formidable wide receiver groups in the NFL. It would take a lot of pressure off of Brandon Ayuk, but it would also change his role a little bit. Are they willing to change the role of Brandon Ayuk? I don't know if they are. Um, and with Deshaun Jackson, he's he's a little bit more interesting to me because he's a guy that played at Cal Berkeley. I, I studied film of him 
and Lavelle Hawkins, you know, going through drills. That's one of the the videos that I have of receiver drills, and it's it's him, and he's he's tremendous. Um, and he's got that top end speed, and he can do all kinds of cool stuff. And the 49ers always like weapons like that that can change the game, right? They've always wanted a Marquise Goodwin. They've always wanted one of these guys that could take the top off, and this guy could definitely do it. You could throw him in on situations where Sanu is normally on the field, let him run the vertical, and let Ayuk and Debo Samuel operate underneath George Kittle as well, and there will be uh, tons of opportunities. Lots question, of open people. The question is, Deshaun Jackson, does he want to stay in California? Does he believe the 49ers are a good enough option to win football games? If if it is that he wants to stay in the Bay Area, and he's, like I said, Cal Berkeley, um, then he's an, he, there's an opportunity there. And I think Kyle Shanahan would love to have either one of these players but there are obstacles. Number one, you don't want anyone coming in and messing up your wide receiver room. Absolutely. That's number one. Now, you do have Muhammad Sanu, so he's going to help keep everything in check because he's that veteran. I think Debo has now stepped himself up enough, too. Absolutely. Um, he's going to be able to handle it. But also, you, you got to work out the financials, you know, because you are playing in California. Are these, you know, somebody like OBJ, is he going to be willing to be like, you know what? I made $8 million from Cleveland. I'm just going to sit back, and, you know, and, and take whatever I can get because I want to play for Kyle Shanahan. Um, those are all situations that that could happen, uh, whether it will or not, because it appears Cleveland is willing to let this guy just sit on the inactive list for the rest of the season is the way that they're approaching it. So I don't know if he's actually going to be available. There's also the part where if he gets cut, you know, you don't know where he's going to end up. True. Um, so there's big questions, Alex. But what do you think about these two guys? Look, I think I think both guys are they add something. They can add something to your wide receiver room. Right. Um, the question with OBJ is just health, and does he still have the dynamics to take the top off the defense? And does he have the explosivity right now coming in and out of breaks to be a guy who can create separation and win? Now, Kyle Shanahan, we've seen this. He can scheme guys open. So will OBJ be open in San Francisco? Of course, of course, because Kyle will find ways to get guys open. But can OBJ win consistently and do those things? I haven't watched enough film of OBJ, in all honesty, to be able to say that right. comfortably, right? To be able to say that with confidence. Yes, OBJ, his dad posted a video. I'm pretty, I watched that video. Pretty sure that was zone coverage, my guy. Pretty sure that's zone coverage, and he's wide open. That's great. So is that on OBJ being wide open, or yeah. is that on Stefanski, Stefanski that he's open? And then I don't know what else happened on that play. So did Baker Mayfield get sacked? Was there pressure? Did Baker Mayfield scramble? Did he throw to a more wide open guy, or did he just check the ball down because he didn't see OBJ? And then again, that's one play out of an entire season. So is that consistently happening? Is that, I don't know. There's a lot of drama going on there. And in all honesty, I would prefer to stay away from it with a 10-foot pole. Just keep it away from this team. We're starting to get a little bit of positive momentum. Don't bring any of that negativity here. Yeah. Get on out of here with this nonsense. Deshaun Jackson is a little bit more of an interesting situation. Because I think the 49ers could use the additional deep stretch shot down the field type of guy. I think, I think that could help. I think it could help Brandon Ayuk also take some stress off of having an additional guy to earn some punts on, on occasion and do some big things and maybe also give him a kick in the rear. Hey, we got this guy that can also make plays in the in their kick return game. So if you want to be a kick returner or punt returner, my guy, better start showing us something because we can always throw D-Jacks back there. We already know that he can do it in this league. He has, a, you know, the 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 Philadelphia, the Miracle, whatever they call it, the, the big punt return against the Giants where they tried to kick the ball oh, out of bounds. Yeah. They biff it. And then Deshaun Jackson fumbles the kick, picks it back up, and then takes it, house calls it. Um, you know, and just lets every new runs along the side or runs along the goal line for like, 20. and then, and then does the turn and the fall in. Yeah. It was absolutely gl What a glorious moment, a uh, terrible moment for giants fans, <laughs> funny moment for me, uh, and great moment for obviously I, I for DJ. It, well. it was pretty funny. Uh, so there, there are a lot of things that Deshaun Jackson can bring to the table for your team. Um, but again, locker room fit is definitely a question. Um, this is a guy who's had some, some issues with locker rooms and had some been, been a little bit of a distraction at times. You know, can you take that on? I, th I think you can. I, and I think the big thing is, is he's looking for the right situation. I think he thought that was going to be the Rams. And, you know, with Matt Stafford and all the weapons you have already, I could be a guy that gets three or four targets a game for, you know, close to 100 yards, some deep stuff, and then give me some screens underneath and give me the ball in open space. Let me make some plays. Let me do my thing. But that hasn't been the case. It hasn't been what's happening. They're not doing that. Uh, and in all honesty, there's been a, a big reliance on the run game for the for the Rams right now. They've been running the football at a very good clip. And surprising, I know to me and, and probably to you and a lot of the cutback crew, the Rams have been running the football really, really well with Daryl Henderson. It actually worked out really well, and they've been mixing in to Sony Michelle. And he's been, I mean, he hasn't been doing bad. I think last week it was like five or six carries for 42 yards. There's nothing bad about that You're at welcome. all. 
Uh, it's, it's good stuff. You were you weren't wrong. You weren't wrong on Sony Michelle. He's been a good mix up, change yeah. of pace back. Um, so I, I, he's looking for the right situation. Is it about area, right? Is it about team? Is it about circumstance? You know, I see being, seeing people going, yeah, he wants to go to a winning situation. Why would you come to San Francisco? We're not winning. I we're one game away from 500, and you're two wins away from being over 500 on the right track towards, you know, putting yourself in a better position to make playoffs. Season's not over. This isn't a losing situation. It's a different situation. It'd be a situation where Sean Jackson will be coming in, and, you know, you're going to need to add something to this team, but you're not necessarily a guy that we're going to have to rely on. Well, that was sort of a similar situation to the Rams. Is this what he's really looking for? I don't know. Can he definitely add some weapons and do some things for this offense to give a little bit of a jump start and a kick start and a little jolt of energy? Absolutely. Are you out of love completely with Trent Sherfield? If so, maybe DJX is the solution. But if you do this and you bring him in, Ant, the only reason they make these moves, I think, is if there's no chance for Jalen Hurd to come back this year. Why? They're different. I know, that they're, I know that they're different, 100%. but who is the guy that you're moving off of to activate Jalen Hurd and bring him back into the fold? Juwan Jennings. You think so? They're, they're literally the same player, except Jalen Hurd can do so much extra. True. Um, but, you know, with DJX, it's all about, you never know what he's going to do, right? Where his he, thought process is. He's been is, in Washington. Yeah. He's been in Tampa. He's been in Philly. Um, he's been in Los Angeles. He moves around a lot, and it's all whatever, you know, whatever he wants to do. And there's been a push for... 49ers fans for years to get Deshaun Jackson. True. Every single time Deshaun Jackson was going to be available, whether it was via trade or as a free agent, Jay Hill would send me a, we need Deshaun Jackson. Every time. Not not like, oh, maybe not this time. Every single time. <laughs> and I think that there is, because of the ability to stretch the field. And I think the one thing we got going for us is Kyle Shanahan. Yeah. This guy understands that Kyle Shanahan can scheme him open and give him opportunities, not only with fly sweeps, with the screens down the field. There would be those situations. The question is, does he believe that Jimmy Garoppolo can get him the ball in those situations? If he believes it, and maybe that's a Trent Williams phone call, maybe that is something that, that can happen, is then he'll come here. That's right? true. That is yeah. a possibility. If that's the true. money matches and then that he believes that Jimmy is that guy. Um, but I, I don't think he's going to make a... a, a very quick decision. I think he's going to let it play out, you know, see what's available. Everyone just got through the trade deadline, um, but he's going to land somewhere. Someone's going to get themselves a nice piece and there's opportunities for him in new Orleans, Baltimore, maybe Tampa, depending on situation. Um, there's all kinds of situations where he can go and be successful. I do not want to see him end up in Seattle. No, nope. um, he left the Rams and you know, he, and that that's good. Uh, now the 49ers don't have to worry about playing him in a couple of weeks. Um, the only thing that I would say about Deshaun Jackson is this is a guy that likes to be salty. Um, if he is salty about the way something happened in Los Angeles with McVay and this offense, He'll and they stay didn't in the use NFC him, there is a possibility he goes, you know what? I'm going to go to San Francisco. I'm going to play in the Bay Area. I like it here. And I'm going to be completely going against the Rams and trying to tear them up. Jalen Ramsey, you can't cover me one-on-one. -on -one. I'm too fast. Um, he likes those kind of things. He likes those challenges. He's that guy. He is. Um, and I think he would like to prove here towards the end of his career that he's still one of the best players. He's kind of been forgotten a little bit. Um, people only respect his speed, but not how great he was as a receiver and how dynamic he was. And I think he's trying to recapture a little bit of that. Um, so there's an attitude there. Kind of matches up with another guy that we got, um, the signal caller, Jimmy Garoppolo, who's what? trying to prove that he's still one of those guys or can be one of those guys. You're not wrong, Ant, and it may it may be a good fit. We'll see. Time will tell what happens with this, but I do agree with you on one thing there. DJX is definitely going to take his time. He's not going to rush. He's going to make the best decision for DJX, and that's A-OK. -okay. He should. He should make the best decision for him, especially if he feels like he still has something to prove and wants to show that he's still an elite talent in this league and one of the, a guy that should be feared, not just deep, but be feared whenever the ball's in his hand, whether he's catching it short on a screen, over the middle of the field, slants, deep balls, whatever it is. Deshaun Jackson wants that, and OBJ wants to get back to that as well. They both want to recapture. Both guys are hungry. Question will just be, can it, can it work? Can it work here yeah. in San Francisco? Well, and, and you know now, Alex, that we said he's going to take his time. He's going to sign as of the recording, you know, as of right now, probably. He probably just Literally signed. just signed with somebody. Yeah. Um, Darn you, DJX. That's usually what happens. You know you know, he's a big avid fan of the podcast. He, he yeah. enjoyed our, our video on him that we did last offseason in which, you know, DJX beep, beep, meet beeped across the screen a few times. It was really fast. It was lightning quick. Yeah, we, we definitely wanted, we definitely would love to have Deshaun Jackson's abilities here. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's interesting how it's going to play out. But yeah, usually that's what happens to us. We... We start talking about someone and they sign within like minutes. Never happens, man. What are you talking about? We never predict things on this podcast. We're always completely wrong and we're stretching. 
We're stretching and well, reaching for things because we have no idea what we're talking hopefully about. Hopefully, we're doing a breaking news here in a few minutes that the 49ers okay. have signed Deshaun Jackson. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be great. And uh, if we are... We'll see you for that breaking news episode. <laughs> uh, but look, let us know about all of this down below. Jimmy G's comments, the player status updates, how excited you are for this game, the DJX possibilities, the OBJ possibilities, Jimmy's comments on Ayuk, Jimmy's comments about himself, Mike McDaniel's comments. We want to hear from you about all of it, so let it leave it down in the comment section below. And while you're down there commenting away, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't already, hit that notification bell. Hop on over to Patreon as well, because we got all 22 film breakdowns. You don't want to miss those, all 22 film preview. You don't want to miss that. A live stream Friday night after all of our videos are done. Know your opponent finishes. You can head on over to Patreon and have a nice live stream where I'm going to be talking with a few members of the Cutback crew that are involved in this league. My buddy Drew as well in the Cut back fantasy football league as we fantasy draft our madden lineups and our madden teams for what is going to be a glorious set of circumstances yeah. over there on patreon and a couple sneak peeks sneak peeks and sneak previews over here on youtube and any members on youtube you will also get some of those uh some of those games as well as well as full madden gameplay it's gonna be a lot of fun yeah i'm excited for all that there's a lot happening um get involved in any of it that you want to get involved in and also you know leave us comments uh, i've seen some some new people leaving comments this week, and it's it's been encouraging. Uh, some of them I've interacted with, some I haven't got around to it. I'm That's I'm true. still working on it. Um, but yeah, everyone's got good opinions about the 49ers right now, and some people are still critical. Some people are positive. Um, and all all areas are are welcomed. Uh, I'm just curious what you guys think about the topics that we talked about, and especially about you know what is going on with uh, Brandon Ayuk. Um, is everyone now thinking that he's on his way? You know, is it, is he about to have a huge game? I think we're all hoping so stonks brandon Ayuk stonks to the moon man <laughs> to the moon give me the football hands with brandon Ayuk. that's what i want man listen a lot of fun good episode stick around we got jay in the bay coming up what's good with our boy he's gonna tell you everything that you need to know about this game about the arizona cardinals as well as his five big things you don't want to miss any of that and then know your opponent where we go over the film some all 22 film of the arizona cardinals and getting to know what their offense is doing what their defense is doing and what limitations we might see if there's no Kyler Murray, no D Hop. Mm, you're gonna enjoy that. Know your opponent. Uh, but until the next one, cutback crew, faithful. Stay safe. And remember the right way is, is always the 49ers way.